Welcome to MAKE, a course taught at the University of South Florida. In this project you will build a switch-triggered binary counter with the Arduino. You will learn the use of switches as input devices, how to debounce switches, and you will practice the use of the return statement in functions. Okay, let's examine first how we can hook up a switch to an Arduino digital pin. So the first thing we do uh, is to define that uh, digital pin as input and um, what that means is is that this input uh, this 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 pin becomes a high impedance uh, input uh, the way to look at this pin is essentially that the uh, pin is just hooked up to a uh, about a hundred uh, kilo ohm resistor to ground and um, that we go here to the uh, uh, logic circuits inside the Arduino. So on the outside, if we want to hook up a switch, what we do is we connect the, the, the pin via the switch to ground, but we also have to hook up the pin to uh, 5 volts through a 1 kilo ohm resistor, which is usually called a, a pull-up. So you see what happens here, the yellow dots are the current flow, so as long as this uh, switch is open, there's a little bit of a current flowing uh, through this resistor, through this input to ground. Right? This is a small current because we have 100 kilo ohms, so if we look here actually into the, uh, the, in the inspector window of iCircuit, um, we can tell that the current uh, through the resistor, right, I, I highlighted it here, that is uh, just about 50 microamps, so this is a pretty small current. The voltage at the resistor up here, or at the, at the pin at this point, is a little bit less than 5 volts. Um, that makes sense because we have a voltage divider here, 1 to 100, um, that uh, um, costs us a little bit of the voltage that is um, that is applied to the resistor up here. Okay, let's see what happens uh, if I close the switch. We can actually see what happens at the pin, um, what what voltage is at the pin here in the um, oscilloscope window. Okay, let's close it. So the voltage goes to zero as we would expect and you also see that the current is now flowing directly from the 5 volts through the 1 kilo ohm resistor into ground and there is virtually no uh, current flowing through the, um, through the uh, uh, 100k resistor because the switch is of course um, uh, has no resistance or very little. So let go, we're back to 4.95. Okay, that's how we hook up a switch to an Arduino pin uh, to use it as an input device. This is the fritzing diagram for the binary LED counter from the last uh, in-class project. So here now we want to add um, a push button that we can operate this counter by pressing the button. So let's get a button here and put it on the breadboard. So the button acts between these two contacts, open, close. So if we remember from the circuit that we just did, we need to connect one side of this, um, of this button to ground. So we can pull that down here. And the other side we connect to pin 12, all right, and we also need to put in the pull-up resistor. So let's get a resistor and connect it here to the pin and the other side of the resistor we need to connect to, uh, to 5 volts. So I'm using a power rail now, so I'm connecting it here to the power rail the red one, and we connect the power rail to 5 volts. So. In the meantime I cleaned up the circuit. Um, the last thing we need to do is to change the resistor. Uh, we're using 1 kilo ohm and 
here we go so now we have here the typical colors for uh, one kilo ohm here is the uh, breadboard setup so I added the switch from the Arduino kit here is the uh, pull-up resistor here we go to pin 12 uh, this here connects the power rail to 5 volts and we are connecting here on the other end of the switch uh, to ground now it is time to look at the Arduino sketch I started out writing the sketch using the uh, sketch for the binary LED counter from the last in-class project. Um, the only thing we do here is we basically add the switch at pin 10 as we just saw in the uh, fritzing diagram. So the first thing is uh, that I did is I, I put the, uh, the uh, part of the sketch that controls the LEDs into a function so in order to uh, work this example here you should uh, have watched the um, the tutorial on the use of functions from this segment so this is the uh, 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 function that sets the LEDs I call it set LEDs and basically the only variable that we're passing into this function is the uh, is the counter value and then here everything is the is the same like before we basically go through the bits of the counter value with the bit read command and then we do digital write uh, high or low depending on whether we have a um, the uh, uh, one or zero okay so here we have the setup we can use the serial port um, then we define the LED pins like in the previous example but we add now the uh, uh, the input pin where we uh, connected the um, the tap button, and so here we did something new. Um, we actually uh, use here a, a preprocessor directive, a defined statement to actually tell the compiler uh, which pin we actually want to set. So in this we did up here. You, you may note here we have this. Um, um, uh, number sign define statement so this is this preprocessor directive as they call it and what it does is it assigns to the text string switch pin it assigns the text string 12 and so when the compiler starts when you click on upload essentially what happens is in a, in a first pass it looks throughout the entire sketch for text strings that are switch pin and it replaces them with 12 and then after all of these define statements have been worked out then the actual compiling process starts so this is a great way to write code where you want to keep things flexible who knows if you really want to use pin 12 right so you may you may use the, the switch pin in various locations in your code but you only once here tell the um, tell the Arduino IDE that you actually want to have it on pin 12 so in a future design if you wanted to use pin 11 you could just replace here 11 and then everywhere else it would be uh, changed automatically so a very convenient thing to use these defined statements also when you read the code it says your switch pin not number 12 so it tells you immediately aha this is the this is the pin that we use for the switch so a very nice way to make a uh, readable code so anyway so here we use the pin code command again and we make it an input this time so a an, an, uh, high impedance uh, input situation okay now here in the main arduino loop um, we have the uh, set LED command so this is the first thing that happens so basically the counter is interpreted the LEDs are set then we have the delay to slow things down a little and then we uh, use the read switch uh, function that I will explain in a minute and that basically um, f uh, uh, reports back whether the switch is on or off so if it's on this uh, read switch function sends back a true um, if it is off then we would get a false true and false are just um, 
uh, 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 constants that are predefined in the Arduino IDE. So when you say true, you could also say one here or zero for false. But of course, it makes again the course the uh, the uh, code more readable if you write true instead of one or zero. Um, okay, so if the switch is pressed, then we count up the counter, right? So this is in this uh, if statement here. What we also have in the if statement are our already known serial print commands where we basically tell back to the to the serial monitor what the counter is doing. So every time we press the switch we count up once and we send through the serial interface what the counter uh, status is at this point. And then we go back and we set the LEDs anew for the new counter setting, wait a little and then check again if the switch is there. So there's one more thing with the read switch uh, function. Uh, we have the debounce time that we put in here as, a, uh, as a, um, a variable in this function. So this is being passed into the function. So what is that? So we define it here, right? Again, this is, we use the define statement. So the debounce time is really the number 200. And what we will see now in the function is, is that this is the debouncing time of 200 milliseconds. Okay, here is the read switch function with that debounce input. And um, what we do now here is to read out the uh, pin. And you would think it could be simpler than all these statements here because after all the pin is either 5 volts or 0 and all we have to do is read that pin state and then send back true or false. Uh, into the main loop and we would actually we would then be able to react to that to that pin however the problem is that um, that mechanical switches do something called bouncing so every time you press the switch what happens is um, it doesn't close immediately it actually opens close opens close opens close a few times until it finally settles in the closed state and so this is called bouncing so it's really mechanically the um, the contact is bouncing up and down a little until the energy has dissipated and the switch is finally closed. And so since the Arduino runs at 16 megahertz, it's a pretty fast uh, uh, a processor. Um, it can read every single one of these bounce events, and that could that that would then end up in giving you several um, uh, incidents of the switch being pressed. So the counter would not count up just once every time you press it, but a few times, depending on how hard you hit the switch. And that we need to deal with here. And so here we have what they call a soft debouncing uh, um, uh, 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 process, and we do that by essentially um, defining a time during which we ignore uh, further switch activities once the switch has been pressed once or has been activated once. And we defined that in the beginning here to 200 and everything is, two is, is, is milliseconds when we use these uh, time commands. So there's 200 milliseconds, so a fifth of a second we ignore uh, switch activities after the first time it goes on. And so this is what we what we do here, right? We have here an if statement, and the current state that is a, a byte variable that is defined via the digital read command. So this here tells us the, um, the whether the pin is high or low, right? And switch pin again is is was defined as 12. So is pin 12 high or low? Current state has either a one or a zero in it. Okay, so if the current state is low, so that means the, the switch is pressed. Remember, we make a short circuit to ground then on this, on this pin. And the previous state is high, so that means the switch wasn't pressed right before we read here a low. And 200 milliseconds have passed since the last time a low occurred. Only then we actually go into the uh, the uh, these statements here that actually then return a true into the main loop. So this is actually an, uh, a very uh, important command here. So every time you have a function uh, and you want to send back 
a number right here this function is defined to return a byte every time we want to return that byte we use the return statement and so here we return true so basically the byte is uh, is one and that is being sent back here into the main loop where we actually want to know what the switch uh, status is. So this byte is being compared here then with the true statement and if it is true then the counter is being counted up. Okay, so there are a few more things that we do here, right? We set then if we accept this as a valid um, button press moment, then we defined when the, the, the current time um, as the last time that the uh, button was pressed. This is done with the millis uh, command. So millis uh, um, yields the time since the Arduino was turned on and that is since it's in milliseconds that can be a fairly large number so last time here actually needs to be a long variable and long means it is four uh, byte uh, it is a four byte variable in difference to a regular integer variable like for example this counter up here which is just a two byte number so a, a four byte number gives us enough milliseconds um, to actually be able to run the Arduino for a few days before it lapses back to zero so this is good for most practical applications so here we set last time to the current time since the Arduino was turned on so this goes on and on and on and we just say here okay the button was pressed at this certain time and we store that in last time in this long variable there's one more thing about this variable it is a static variable um, that means uh, it is a local variable, however, it is not being deleted every time this function is being entered. So it's sort of like a global variable, but in a, in a local uh, setting within this um, function. If you define a variable just with the um, dimensional statement here, byte, then um, this uh, variable every time we go into this function it actually starts out as zero so byte current state defines it as zero and then it is only equated to what comes out of the digital read function that reads out pin 12. Okay so this happens if we have a valid button pressing right um, it's not or it's it's not already low because it was just a few milliseconds before pressed and this is just a bounce event and we waited long enough to be sure that no bouncing has has occurred and it's still low only then we send back the value true so this debounces the um, the button pressing now the else statement that's what happens if this is not true here these these three statements then we say uh, return false that means um, the button is not pressed right and of course since the um, the uh, a previous state uh, in this case would be high because uh, we have no short circuit at the pin so we would have 5 volts at the pin if it is not pressed so previous state is high this would actually set the state for the next button for the next valid button pressing because then we would have previous state high here and we could combine it with current state low I see I made a little mistake here so it should be high here and low you see I had to play a little bit with this before I made this video um, this is also why we have these serial uh, print statements I was a little bit confused at some point and I used them to for debugging purposes so this is a very uh, good way to do debugging um, if you're confused what one of your variables is doing in the code as it is running and not doing what you want you put serial print statements in there and then you can observe on the serial monitor uh, what is happening okay let's see if this is working seems it does and we also see that every time we click the button it counts up exactly one so it seems that the debouncing uh, routine is doing its job if we put the finger on continuously then the counter just counts up this concludes the instructional part um, 
So now it's time to do it yourself. So add the switch and uh, get it to work. The uh, sketch that I used is posted. Um, and then uh, it's time to modify things and uh, do a few things on your own. So add another button um, that you have a counter reset. Right? You might want to set a counter to zero occasionally. So this button uh, should do that. And then you could also a, uh, add a third button um, to enable backwards counting, for example. And uh, please do all this using functions. Right? We don't add low-level code anymore to the main loop. So functions are the way to go. This concludes today's class project, the switch-triggered binary counter. Thanks for watching.